So I just wrapped up another day at IFA 2025 in Berlin. I spent most of the day between the Samsung Hall and the LG Hall. They had both had huge halls and showcased a lot of different products. AI was at the center of almost everything that they showcased. Now, I personally have a gripe with companies using the word AI left and right. It, it feels they just throw it around. It is a buzzword. It sells probably, but I'm not always convinced there is actual AI in everything they claim has AI. Throughout IFA, I saw a lot of products uh, that were explained to me as having AI, but then when I responded, every other similar product of the last 10, 15 years does the same thing. I did not always get a convincing answer. So I'm, I'm not sure it is actual AI and everything, but nonetheless, there were a lot of cool tech, cool products showcased. So let's jump right in. And I will be splitting this video into two separate ones. Otherwise, it's going to be too long. I'm going to start with Samsung and then I'll release part two covering the LG Hall. So let's jump right in. Let's start with the big screens. The star of the booth was the 115 inch micro RGB TV, not quite traditional micro LED, not your average mini LED either. This one uses microscopic RGB LEDs as a backlight with pixel level precision. Samsung calls it the world's first micro RGB TV. And I have to say, looking at it in person, the colors almost jump out at you. Everything looked live, vibrant and hyper real. But of course, this is not something you'll impulse buy at your local electronic store. Price tag? Around $30,000 or euros, depending on where you're shopping from. Still compared to a true micro LED of similar size, which could run you upwards of $150,000, you could almost say it's a bargain. Almost. Samsung did tell me that prices should come down over time as more brands adapted and economies of scale kick in. We'll see if that plays out. Right next to that was the TGV Micro LED, TGV standing for Through Glass Via. This was a 144 inch modular panel built with a glass backplate so the seams between modules disappear. Samsung claims it's the world's brightest display with about 30% lower power consumption at the same brightness. And thanks to the modular approach, you're not stuck with a single aspect ratio or shape. They also had a transparent micro LED on display. This was cool to see in person, and it's basically see-through with twice the clarity of OLED thanks to more efficient light transmission. You can clearly see objects behind it, which makes it perfect for commercial use. Think advertising, storefronts, showrooms, or museums. Could this one day make it into a consumer TV in your living room? Maybe, but for now it's still more of a futuristic concept for business. One interesting demo was the glare-free technology. They had two TVs side by side under harsh lighting. The glare-free one had noticeably less glare, while the regular one reflected the set lights much more. And that's one of those practical features I could actually see making a big difference at home. Samsung also showed off their RTVs, their latest generation of the frame. When these are mounted, they look incredibly close to an actual painting or a framed picture. If you didn't know better, you'd think you were looking at art hanging on the wall. It's a nice way to make a giant screen blend into a stylish home. Then there was the Premiere 5 projector. On its own, it's a 4K short throw projector that can give you up to a 110 inch screen on the wall. But with the camera module, it shrinks down to a 40 inch interactive tabletop display. The touch is surprisingly sensitive and accurate, especially since it's not really a touch surface. Now, beyond the cool factor, I'm not sure how useful this is in real life. To use it in interactive mode, not only are you limited to 40 inches, but you have to project it on a flat surface like a table, so it will not work projected on a wall. So sure, you can play digital chess, sketch, or maybe use it for interactive lessons with kids, maybe even some niche business meetings, but beyond that, it feels a little gimmicky right now, and I can't really see much practical use for it. If you can think of a use case I'm missing, drop a comment, I'd love to know. Another big theme was Vision AI. There's a dedicated AI button on the remote, and when you press it, the TV can actually hold a conversation with you. You can ask about what's on screen, like where was this scene filmed, and it will give you contextual answers. This chase was actually filmed in New York City. It's on Fifth Avenue near Hell's Kitchen. One cool feature of Vision AI is instant translation. It recognizes the audio in real time and offers translated subtitles. There was a demo of that, and as you can see, you can change the language of subtitles, and you instantly get everything transcribed and translated. Now let's get into home appliances, and this is where my skepticism comes in, because Samsung is slapping AI in just about everything, and I'm not always convinced. Let's start with the AI fridge. It has a camera inside that recognizes what you put in, 
added tomato and it logs it. It can even suggest recipes based on what is in your fridge and then even preheat the oven for you. For example, you need to put your tomatoes in one at a time. If you put in a bunch, they're going to be recognized as one tomato. And in a bag, well, they won't be recognized. Also, there's probably just a handful of items it can recognize. You can add things manually to the app, but do you really want to keep doing that every time you put something in your fridge? However, one cool thing, and this is where it does use AI, if you add something it does not recognize and you manually teach it what it is, the next time you add that same thing, it will remember it. It can learn up to 50 new items, but apparently it should be the exact same brand, same packaging for it to recognize it. So all in all, cool, but not quite sure it's mature. Then there's AI in the fridge as well. It can learn your patterns and adjust the temperature accordingly. For example, if you have breakfast at 9 a.m. every day and open the fridge, it's going to anticipate that. And then before that time, lower the temperature a bit in anticipation if you open the fridge so the fridge doesn't get much warmer when you open the doors. At night, for example, if it knows you do not open the fridge between, let's say, 11 p.m. and 8 a.m., it will raise the temperature a bit to conserve energy. Now, here again, it might be cool in theory. In practice, I'm not yet convinced. Traditional fridges have always had thermostats and regulate the inside temperature. So at night, for example, when you're not opening the fridge, the compressor would be barely on anyway, as it does not constantly need to be on. So I'm a bit skeptical of the whole AI learning patterns in my fridge, but I don't have enough information to discount it fully just yet. What was genuinely impressive was their AI hybrid cooling system, which combines the inverter compressor, which we find on all fridges, with a Peltier element. Together, they can keep the temperature within plus or minus one degree, which is quite impressive. That's pretty tight control. So if you leave the door open or put in hot food, it reacts quickly to stabilize the temperature and can do that with just a few minutes. Now that, in my opinion, is a meaningful upgrade. There was a small piece of that Peltier on demo and when I put my hand on it, it was at room temperature. I pressed the button to turn it on and within just a few seconds, it became extremely cold. Next, the AI washer and dryer. Samsung says the washer detects load size, fabric type, soil level, water level and adjusts detergent dosing automatically. The dryer has similar smarts as well. Now here's the reality check. Washing machines for at least the last 10 to 15 years have had load sensors. They already adjust water and cycle length. And dryers have had moisture sensors for decades. They just don't run on a set timer. They stop when clothes are dry. So calling this AI is a bit of a stretch. The fabric detection sounds cool, but here's the kicker. It can only detect normal, delicate, and towels at this point. I was told next year they will have AI Wash Plus, which can detect jeans and outdoor clothing. Also, if you have a mixed load, that whole fabric detection is not going to be of much use. Where Samsung does add something useful is the automatic detergent dosing system. You fill up tanks of detergent and softener, and it automatically dispenses the right amount for up to 17 washes. To me, that is more practical than the so-called AI. And because it's a two-in-one washer and dryer, the drying cycle automatically starts when the washing cycle ends. And if you have a smaller load of under five kilos, I was told it can wash and dry everything in under two hours. So that bit is actually nice. And then there's the AI oven, and that is one I actually really liked. It has a camera inside that recognizes what you're cooking, a pizza, for example, and suggests the right program. It can send you an alert when it's done, so you're sure not to burn the crust. Now, this particular one sounds like it uses real computer vision, so I would call it proper AI, and honestly, who does not want an oven that stops you from burning dinner? What's also cool, because of the camera, you can even monitor and check in on whatever you're cooking right from your phone. As an oven, it's also very versatile and I really like that. It is a steam oven, so it has a steam compartment you can fill with water and use a steam function. It can also air fry. What's also really nice is that it has dual cooling. So there are two sections and you can independently control each of them. So you can be cooking two different things at two different temperatures and they're completely independent of each other. Moreover, if you're only using the upper section, for example, the lower one does not turn on, so you save energy. Samsung also showed their new AI induction hub. Instead of traditional radial coils, it uses a grid system so you can place pots anywhere. And if you move one, the hub automatically shifts the heat zone and maintains the same temperature level you had. That's actually cool. It also has an AI boil sensor. It detects vibrations when water boils and automatically lowers the heat to prevent spills. It's actually practical and could save you from cleaning up overflows. 
Plus there's a built-in extractor that automatically adjusts suction based on steam levels with washable filters. Again, useful, but I'd call it smart sensing rather than actual AI. The AI air conditioner uses what Samsung calls fast and comfort cooling. It learns your patterns, cools the room quickly, and then switches to wind-free cooling, dispersing air through thousands of micro holes so you don't feel a draft. They claim up to 30% energy savings while maintaining comfort at around 24 to 26 degrees with 45 to 60% humidity. But here's the context. Inverter ACs have already been doing efficient cooling for years. Instead of just turning on and off, the compressor varies the RPM to keep temperature steady and save energy. That's been standard in ACs for a long time. So yes, the wind-free mode is new and might be more comfortable. I like that idea. But again, not fully convinced of AI claims here just yet. Lastly, the AI dishwasher. It uses turbidity sensors to check how cloudy the water is and it adjusts the wash cycle accordingly. Samsung says it uses a deep learning algorithm to do this, but again, the catch, dishwashers have had turbidity sensors for decades. They've always adjusted cycle length based on how dirty the water is. Samsung's refinement may make it more accurate, but let's be honest, calling this AI could just be marketing and not a revolution, but I may be wrong. So this wraps up my coverage of the Samsung Hall at IFA 2025. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel to get notified when I release part two covering the LG Hall. Until next time, cheers.